bigger the name, the more painful it is when they suck. Looks like you got my invitation. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 bad video games in great franchises. Nothing more than a faded memory. Not to be confused with our top 10 video games that ruined their franchises, this list will be focusing on titles that were indeed downright letdowns compared to their predecessors, but whose franchises' names continue to prosper in the industry. That is impressive. So if you didn't see a game that you think should be present here, be sure to check out that list as well as our top 10 most disappointing video game sequels. <laughs> Number 10, Final Fantasy 13. Ready! Gotta keep you kids safe, right? Yeah, we all know what you're thinking. Breathtaking environments, splendid sounds and music, and a bevy of new characters. Where did this title go wrong? You know where you're going, right? I've been here on missions before. Well, it's true that the game received mostly positive reviews from critics. Veteran fans of the series were divided on quite a few elements for the franchise's debut on the seventh generation consoles. Oh, that's... You Forget it! Some of these items included an underdeveloped narrative, a less than inspirational heroine, and the experimentation with linear gameplay. Don't get us wrong, Final Fantasy XIII, unlike its online successor, is an alluring spectacle, but falls short in staying true to the components that helped make its predecessors the greats that they are. Right? Looks that way. Number 9, Resident Evil 6. Back for more. While all the RE games have offered something new, this game fell ill of its very own T-Virus. And by T we mean, too much stuff happening. Playing less like a survival horror and more like a shooter, think of this game as a card that someone at Capcom gave Call of Duty the keys to. Bloated with four explosive campaigns drenched in over-the-top action sequences, RE6 took away the feelings of desperation and strategic thinking that made its franchise legendary. Can't get a clean shot. Though certainly the series' most ambitious title, it goes to show that sometimes, less is more. Whether or not you enjoyed it, we can all just hate the movies, right? As if we didn't have enough problems! Watch out! Number 8, Devil May Cry 2. Looks like it's your lucky day. Though violent and gory, here's a game that would have made even the devil cry. You get it? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Here's your crown. Garnering a heavy amount of less than glamorous reviews from its predecessor, Capcom's 2003 follow-up to their handsome hack and slash made the fatal mistake of believing that Devil May Cry's heart was in its guts and gore. Don't worry. I've got you. The most common complaints of the game were its lackluster combat system, with weapon capabilities being dulled down from the first. <laughs> Further watered down distinctions included the details of the environment, which had been sacrificed for open spaces, as well as the protagonist, Dante's personality, whose arrogant dialogue had been significantly trimmed. Well, well, what have we here? Do you have to ask? Number 7, Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. <laughs> Attempting to double down on the success of the first Black Ops, Black Ops 2 and its handheld companion for the Vita were cleverly developed simultaneously for concurrent release. The Call of Duty Black Ops to Classified Bundle. PlayStation Vita, console quality on the go. For those of you who couldn't fully appreciate the former, we promise that Black Ops 2 will be heaven after a few short levels, uh, minutes with this shabby shooter. Undoubtedly the quintessential embarrassment for the Call of Duty franchise, Declassified received non-stop flack for its cramped campaign, for taking the eye out of AI, and an all-round awkward gameplay style. This was supposed to be the game that would finally make the Vita worth buying, but alas, it turned out to be anything but. Number 6, Silent Hill Homecoming. Oh god! Oh, oh god! Sure, Downpour was downright deplorable, but we're giving the honors to Homecoming for being what most consider to be the franchise's turning point in its reception. Guess you're not my friend. The first game to be featured on 7th gen consoles. The closest thing to new that Homecoming had to offer was its graphics. That said, the game lacked much needed and expected innovation, with players being greeted to the same old foggy effects and tiring melee system. But, you know, just in HD. This town's so quiet. It's changed. The new monster designs were also kinda divisive among fans. 
citing the models from previous installments to be far more frightening and inventive. And let's not forget the cheesily executed voiceover that the franchise remains notorious for. Bad dream. Number 5. Thief. Care to make a little more noise next time? Originally announced as the fourth entry for the franchise, Square Enix, after buying out original developer Eidos Interactive, insisted on an overhaul as part of rebranding. The result, five years later, was this wannabe first-person Batman knockoff. Yeah? <laughs> That's work you don't see much since the factories came. Though praised for much of what made the series great, including its stealth-based gameplay, environmental details, and some replay value. This failed reboot was widely criticized for its bland story, flat voiceover work, and technical issues. Some of these included a few too many loading screens and really glitchy AI. Someone's here. If you sat around wishing that someone would make a proper sequel to Thief, just play Dishonored instead. I can move faster, I can climb faster, I can- You can kill faster and make mistakes faster, I get it. Number 4. Metroid Other M Codename Baby's Cry a common SOS with the urgency of a baby crying. One of the most ambitious titles for the Wii, Other M was a beauty to look at, had a story with some potency, and served as a good nostalgia resource for veteran fans with its 3D side-scroller style gameplay. Strangely, it's within these same elements that many gamers felt iffy about the title, with some criticizing Samus's characterization, as well as the ability to switch on and off between third person and stationary first person. Though many critics were impressed, fans ultimately weren't, mostly because the story and dialogue was some of the dumbest stuff they'd ever been subjected to. Samus, activate the barrier feature on your suit to protect yourself from heat damage. Number 3. Tomb Raider, the Angel of Darkness First question, who are you? Second question, what are you and your buddies up to in here? Supposedly in development three years prior to its release, Angel of Darkness was a Tomb Raider so terrible, it spawned the franchise's first attempt at a reboot. Why should I care? Because I'm being stalked. People are dying out there. Flacked heavily for its mediocre for the time graphics, awkward camera setups, and technical bugs, this game was a complete mess in its presentation from level one. Don't keep me hanging around. I need to reach the roof before I lose my grip. Criticized even further was its gameplay, with poor controls being the most dominant of the complaints, along with a lack of innovation for Lara's actions. But the complaints don't stop there. There were unnecessary stealth sections that you couldn't avoid, and a really strange RPG-style leveling up system that made Lara stronger by opening doors. Tomb Failure. I feel stronger now. Number 2. Castlevania 64 For some games, the transition into 3D did not go smoothly, and Castlevania 64 is one that exemplifies this to the bone. Upon release, fans and critics alike praised the presentation, citing graphics, atmosphere, and music to be beautifully fitting for the title. Still, a lot were divided on the overall gameplay experience, with the biggest grumbles being the short stack of weapons and the repetitive jumping over and killing of lots of skeletons that you could have made a drinking game out of. However, the final nails in the coffin were the universally panned controls and camera system, which made the game far more irritating to play than it was nice to look at. Before we hack and slash at our number one franchise flub, let's take a look at a few horrible, I mean dishonorable mentions. Nobody invited you! This is an invitation-only party. Very clever, Dragon. Number 1. Sonic Boom – Rise of Lyric <laughs> Welcome, Sonic. Considered to be one of the worst games released in recent memory, we chose Rise of Lyric over the other subpar Sonic entries since even the most die-hard fans of Sonic can't really stand by it. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm pretty sure it's a bad thing. Panned for its overwhelming novelties, this game took all the adrenaline rush from the previous Sonic titles and overdosed it with testosterone-driven steroids. The boulders are taking up parts of the road! This button should do something! As a result, fans were force-fed with pompous environments, tedious combat mechanics, not-so-puzzling puzzles, and appalling jokes that we doubt even the developers found funny. Yeah, well, you are a bit of a wreck. 
Not funny. Reflecting its poor reviews was even poorer market performance, with sales barely hovering over half a million units sold six months after its release, making it the worst selling title for our blue hedgehog friend. Wait, no, 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 no! Do you agree with our list? You've got to take it down. Which video game title from a great franchise do you detest? For more non-stop top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Way to go! Exit stage right. Thank <laughs> you.